right now there's a certain culture on Instagram that you know there's a formula you follow this and you're gonna get followers you're gonna get likes if you want to promote a tea make sure you post it next to your ass but I don't I don't I don't I don't believe in that that's not who I am and so in my opinion you know when, when people are making waves and they're going against the grain there's going to be people who see the waves they feel the waves coming and they're like Fuck yes, this is a wave. This is an opportunity to grow. This is an opportunity to ride. I'm gonna ride this wave. I'm gonna go with you. You know, even though it's different and you know you're not posting the same things you used to, you're growing. I wanna grow. I'm inspired to grow. But then there's gonna be those people who are just floating along in life and they feel the wave coming and they're like, why the fuck are you making waves? I'm trying to float. My name is Nicole Mejia. I am, I'm gonna be 29 on Saturday. Um, I'm from Miami, Florida, and I own the Body Positive Lifestyle brand that empowers women to become the best version of themselves through health and fitness. I started this journey by uh, starting an Instagram page in 2012, and I also started modeling at the time. And modeling was never something that I actively pursued. Actually, at the time, I was pretty lost in life. I didn't know what I wanted to do, who I wanted to become. I didn't even really know what my talents were. Um, but I knew that I loved people, and I knew that I loved psychology, and I loved helping people. And I was dating a guy at the time who happened to be a firefighter and his mom was a nurse and he was like, why don't you go into nursing? You know, you love the body, you love science, you love helping people and nurses and firefighters kind of, you know, go together, I guess. Um, so I went into nursing school and it, this was like the first time in my life where I actually applied myself um, and I realized what my strengths were. I realized that I loved helping people, but I also kind of came to this conclusion that I didn't like doing the same thing every day. That was not for me. You know, waking up and working a 12-hour shift where there's this monotony and routine, and the fact that, yes, you're a nurse, you're helping people, but it doesn't always mean that you're going to make the impact that you want to make because people are at their worst. You know, they're at their sickest. They're mentally at their worst. You know, they've kind of reached the end of their rope, and so you can give everything that you have to give and not see the, the fruits of your labor. And that, to me, was emotionally exhausting. Modeling kind of gave me this false sense of confidence and this false sense of security where I could put out a picture of my body very superficially and I could get feedback that kind of boosted my ego and made me feel good about myself. But then conversely, I also was very sensitive to attack. I was very sensitive to the things that people said about me. If they attacked my thighs, you know, which were always my greatest insecurity, my entire life, my thighs have always been my greatest insecurity. If they attacked them, I could get 100 comments, 99 of them be positive, and that one negative one about my thighs, because that's genuinely what I thought about my thighs, that's the one I would listen to. That's the one that would get to me. As I continued to evolve as a person, the brand continued to evolve, which was cool. So I was getting to a place where I was like, okay, I really wanna like embody this whole self-love thing, and I really want to spread this. Because when I, got to that place where I accepted my body, I felt like I was living my life like this. I was living my life so focused on myself, the things that I didn't like about myself, the things that I couldn't achieve, the things, my limitations. And when I, it just was like, all right, this, I, I am who I am, this is what it is. I felt like this. I felt like blinders came down in my mind and that I could see things that I was capable of that I never saw before and that empowered me. And so I wanted to spread that and show women that yes, you, you have flaws, but they don't define you. you. We all have a friend who, when they take a picture with someone and then they look at the picture, they're always like, oh, look, at my, look at my arms, they look so fat, right? They draw to light their insecurities. They make people focus on the things that they don't like about themselves because they're so focused on it that that's, that's what people notice about them. You know, and I and I wanted to show people that if you just own who you are, even though it's it's maybe it's not even the best that it could be, you then have the power to move forward and change it, 
right? Like if you don't accept where you are, who you are at this very moment, how could you ever expect to get accurate GPS instructions to get to where you want to where you want to go? If I don't know my originating destiny, you know, where I'm going from, I can never get the proper steps that it's going to take to get there. And so there's power in acceptance of, of your truth, of who you are, flaws and all. The first time I look in the mirror, I go, wow, look at the cellulite on my legs. That's the first thing, right? A negative. But I retrain my brain to say, but they're strong, but they're powerful, but I can run fast, but I can lift heavy, right? And, and so I, I, yes, there's things I want to improve on them, but there's also these things that I'm grateful for. And, and that there's room for both, you know? There's room for both. You can, and you can use the gratitude that you have for what you have because I have legs and there's people on this planet that don't have them. And then I can use that to motivate me and fuel me to achieve what I want to achieve with my legs, you know?